Ah, okay, we're live. Welcome, everybody. Everybody, hopefully, on Instagram and YouTube. Welcome in. This is uh, our second live stream. Um, my name is Troy Scribner. I'm the remote throwing program coordinator here at ATP. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, we're going to be doing this regularly. We're going to be doing live streams on YouTube, and we're going to go on Instagram, and we're going to try to uh, talk about some stuff, man. Um, yeah, I hope everybody is having a good time and a good day, and let's get started, I guess. What else can we do? So the, the topic that I wanted to talk about is this Kyler Murray ordeal. Um, hopefully everybody knows who Kyler Murray is. Um, he's a football player. He's a quarterback for the uh, Arizona Cardinals. Um, he has a heavy baseball history and um, obviously was trying to decide early on in his career whether to play baseball or football. Um, and if you guys have any comment feel free write in the chat i want i'll be watching this whole time instagram too you guys can write and uh if you have anything for me write it in the chat i will try to respond to as many as i can um same here on youtube also if you could before we get into this even more make sure you guys like and subscribe to our channel for more stuff we're gonna be doing this regularly probably weekly and uh we'll let you know kind of what day that falls on um, but yeah, thank you for joining us. Hit the like button if you could. It helps out a lot. Subscribe to the channel and then turn on your notifications so you know the next time we go live. Because um, we're, like I said, we're going to be doing this regularly. But uh, I appreciate you all joining me. Um, okay, yeah. So yeah, Kyler was dis deciding whether to play baseball or football professionally. And he had the opportunity to play both. I guess he was talented enough to play both. And obviously he chose football. And And, uh, <clears throat> you know, there's been a lot of controversy surrounding Kyler and his ability to perform and his ability to lead a team and stuff like that. Um, if you guys have questions about the throwing program and, and baseball and pitching, please let them rip. I'll, I'll try to get to them um, as much as I can. If you guys are on Instagram, um, it will be easier and maybe better for me if you guys hop on YouTube and write in the chat. It's a little bit easier for me to see than having to go on my phone. But if you guys have questions about baseball stuff, please write it in the chat and I will answer that after the first half of this. We're going to spend a little bit of time talking about Kyler first and then we'll get into like any kind of a conversation or ask me stuff that you guys want to at the end. But uh, but yeah, there's been a lot of debate recently on Kyler and if he's a selfish player and uh, if he was, you know, selfish because he has such a baseball past and what does playing baseball in his past give you as far as a mindset towards your sport and towards a team sport and you know if that builds the proper mentality for football since football and baseball are obviously very different um and yeah so there's a lot of debate there's been accusations of him being called selfish and and being out for himself and he's not willing to put in the work and the time to study and and do the things that he needs to do in order to uh in order to perform yeah um, I think one of his, uh, his ex teammates called him out for being selfish recently. That's kind of a thing that's been going around and, uh, yeah. <laughs> 58, you mean 59, the number behind me? 180 seconds or less. Is that what you mean? That's a, that's a miss. That's a misprinted Jersey, by the way, behind me. Just a little story. Misprinted jersey. Yeah, we were we were trying to order one so that I could uh, sign it and put it up in our facility in Stanford, and they sent me the wrong they sent me the wrong number and, and the wrong jersey number. So we're gonna order a new one, and I get to keep this one. So it's kind of just a spoofy thing. It's it's just a decorative piece. <coughs> Shannon Evans, I will get to you um, after we are done talking about Kyler here, but I appreciate your question. Um, yeah. So you know. Baseball and football are obviously very different. Um, be huge um, team sport, football. Everybody's you know on the battlefield fighting each other and, and trying to, to win as a team, and, and it's very team-oriented. And, and there's an argument that baseball is very self-centered and very selfish and um, individualized, and individual you know goals are presented and, and achieved, and there's not too much um, team-oriented 
uh, mentality or, or people think that. And I think that's what people are accusing Kyler of is being selfish because he played baseball and he's always kind of been out for himself and, and wanted to improve his own career and his own life rather than try to help out the team around him. But, you know, it's tough to say. I mean, Kyler, he's, he, you know, whether it's related to his history in baseball is something completely different. Um, I think that it, it speaks more to his personality. I mean, it, I, I don't think that baseball breeds selfish people, if that's the, the argument that people are making. And I think that's part of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think in all levels of baseball that I've played on, since I was in Little League and, and college, I mean, college is massively team-oriented in baseball. I don't think that there's any selfishness being developed in the younger in the younger levels. Good question, Kenneth. I will I will answer you in just a second here. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I I think college is is a way more team oriented baseball atmosphere, and and college summer ball, and definitely high school. I mean, everybody's for a team. That's where we learn, you know. I, and I think Kyler went through the same things. He played baseball in high school and college, and I think that he was involved in an atmosphere that was way more team oriented. And I think that the selfishness, maybe if he has any, he speaks more towards how he is as a person. There's plenty of people like that playing baseball. There's plenty of people like him in football. I mean, it's just kind of to each his own. Um, but it's an interesting, it's an interesting story because he, he catches a lot of flack. I mean, there's a big thing about him. He wanted to, uh, <laughs> excuse me he likes to play video games that's like one of the big things that came out about him is it was in his contract that he had to study film a certain amount of hours per week and uh or else you know he would be penalized because he just didn't study it enough and was streaming and playing video games more than um what what seemed okay for his profession and the amount of work that he was putting in and um yeah it's just an interesting it's an interesting, he's an interesting guy. I've never heard of a, a football quarterback who's, I mean, he has a lot of responsibility on his shoulders being an NFL quarterback and he has a whole team relying on him to communicate and all that stuff. And, and, uh, you know, that's a tough thing. And he's, he's, uh, he's maybe not equipped mentally to handle it as much as, any, uh, the, the next person would be. And, and, you know, his, his uh his mentality can can his performance can suffer from that mentality and his performance can suffer from under preparing for his sport but as far as how that comes from playing baseball i think that's insane i mean if anything the f the further the, <laughs> if anything the further you get in your career the more selfish things get i know that in my career um going into pro ball especially in the minor leagues things become way more um individualized um completely a complete 180 from college when you're in a team atmosphere and you're trying to win as a team and you have that incentive to win as a squad and and that completely when you go into professional baseball um it, it completely changes because you're you're now you're now not only are you going off to a play for an organization who you know nobody you know you know nobody you're making all new friends you have no idea where your teammates are and then you flip-flop levels you switch teammates i mean so often and then uh <clears throat> it's hard to to play for your team and and you're so worried about progressing in your career and, and moving up the, the ladders that it, it it really just becomes about your own individual performance in the minor leagues and there's very little incentive to play as a team to win as a team um, very little incentive to win in general, which is, I think, a sad part of minor league baseball because that's one of the greatest memories is playing, you know, for a team in college that we all wanted to win. We all had a same goal, but you kind of lose that when you go into pro ball and especially in the minor leagues. The big leagues is different because, you know, you've already made it. So you're now you can like, OK, now we can win as a team, even though a little bit like when you're young, you still want to like do well for yourself and you want to, you know, it matters a little bit less to you when you're at that level what the team does or what happens with the team because you're trying to just progress your own career and have success in your own light so that you can stay there <coughs> and you have people that you're competing with that are your your peers your teammates and that you know as much as people don't want to root against people like that's that's those thoughts are going to enter your head when you're playing uh, competitively against these other guys on your squad that you're competing for for a job you know it's your livelihood you're gonna you're gonna 
compete against them, whether you like it or not, you know, it's, it's natural and it's how the, the business works and it's how the dynamic works. So, you know, uh, definitely way more individualized in professional baseball, but you know, Kyler never played professional baseball. He played, prof- uh, he played baseball in younger, in his younger life. And then went into professional football, which is a completely different dynamic, but I don't think he carried any of that with him. Um, <laughs> anybody else have any comments or can, um, questions about what we're talking about? I mean, uh, I try to scroll through a little bit and see if anybody asked anything. Ken, if you have some good questions, man, I, I really want to answer your questions. Um, he asked, what grade does playing ball start to become a reality? What are signals? College letters, question mark, pro ball, question mark. When do you mean like when playing baseball becomes a reality? Does that mean like as a career? When does it become a reality that it could potentially be a career? I think <laughs> as soon as you get signed in professional baseball, I mean, I think that's when it when it really set, you don't you always have doubts before that moment that it can ever become a career because that's such a big leap, um, it's such a big leap in in your career to to go from you know college ball to professional baseball is the biggest leap or high school to put to a professional but you know only when you sign with an organization that's going to actually give you money to play that's when it becomes real i think that's when it became real for me that i had potential to make this a, a career and make this a livelihood um because before that in college it's just like a crazy hope and a crazy dream and you're just praying and hoping that things are going to work out and and you have this passion for it so you kind of just lean into that trust and then hope that it takes you there but as far as when it becomes real, that's when it becomes real. When you actually get somebody to call you up and say, Hey, we want you to come. We want to pay you to come play for us. Um, that's when things become real, <clears throat> but I mean, you should know kind of in college and maybe even in high school that you have a passion for that. I mean, I think that if you have a passion for baseball, like that's what really starts it, you know, you're, that's, what's going to propel you to work hard to try to achieve that professional signing and, and get drafted or whatever the case is. Um, and that passion you should know early. I mean, whether or not you love playing the sport of baseball, you should know that pretty early. Um, but those are really good questions. Um, kind of thank you for those questions, man. Those are really good. Um, all right, Shannon, I'll, I'll answer your questions now. Um, that's a great question too. MW11 asked, What's your number one piece of advice for how to separate yourself from everybody else in college and get drafted? <laughs> Excuse me. That's an excellent question. Shannon, I'll get to your question in a second. Um, that's a really good question. Separating yourself is a big deal in, in, in baseball when you're trying to progress in your career. And you have to really, the first thing you have to realize is what makes you, you unique. And you have to understand what makes you unique and what, what separates you and what could potentially separate you from everybody else. And you have to lean into that. Um, whether it's, a, you know, your composure, it could be a mental thing. It could be, obviously, if you throw hard, you can lean into that. You, if you have a nasty slider, you can lean into that. Like there are different things that you can pick and choose um, to separate yourself, but, you know, understand that there's always people throwing harder. There's always people with nasty stuff ahead of you. There's always people that have crazy accuracy that are really talented. I mean, there's always people that have more of whatever you have, no matter where you're at. And, uh, I think if you find something truly unique, it has something to do with you and your personality and your, and your mentality. And, uh, that can be a slew of different things. But I think if once you kind of are self-aware enough to realize what you, have that special and then you know how to exploit that i think if if it's special enough people will realize it and it'll separate you naturally um but it, the first step is realizing you know what that is and what 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 you're trying to bring out of yourself and that's a difficult thing because you know you learn about yourself as you play and as you progress and as you learn um that things things may change things may form that you didn't know you had a capability for before so that stuff changes all the time 
Um, but that's a really good question. It's a really difficult thing. And that's one of the main things that they told us in the minor leagues with the Astros. Find what separates you. Find what makes you unique. Because there are tons of guys that have talent, that throw hard, um, that are your kind of style, whatever your style is, whether you're lefty, righty, sidearm, overhand, four-seam guy, two-seam guy, like whatever you are, there's people that you know always are doing that better than you or, or throwing harder or whatever. And you need to find something unique about you that, that shifts it. Um, and I think that mine was heavily related to my mentality and my, and my confidence and my ability to be composed in stressful situations and control the game and, and, and think clearly when things went to crap so that I could nullify damage and get out of situations that somebody else might maybe implode in and give up more runs or whatever. And, uh, you know, being able to field my position and do the little things since I couldn't throw very hard, like you have to find what makes you kind of fit that mold. You know, if you can't fit it by <clears throat> throwing four pitches for strikes, then throw two pitches and make your second pitch nasty. I mean, there's just, a, there's no way to kind of know, but, um, that's a, it's a tough thing. But for me, it was definitely mentality, confidence, composure, the things that, that, separated me was my ability to be aggressive and and throw strikes and and just pound the zone with strikes and and be really aggressive even if i didn't throw that hard or throw harder as hard as the people around me um and i think that's what and do the small things field your positions back up your bases um you know don't mess up signs stuff like that like little things you know um stay healthy that's a big thing i mean there's different things but <clears throat> All right, Shannon, let's let's move over to YouTube here. You guys on Instagram, I appreciate you all watching. Um, slide over to YouTube, man. I'll see your, your chat a little bit easier. The, the chat moves quick on the phone. So um, if you guys have questions, slide into the YouTube. The link is, um, I, it should be in the Instagram description, um, but just go to Advanced Therapy and Performance on YouTube and, and click on the live video. It's right there. Um, Uh, Layden, I will answer your question in a bit. I got to go over to Shannon here. So how do you balance throwing workouts with other sports <clears throat> during the winter with school commitments and cold weather, um, sport commitments? It can be very difficult to keep up with your arm care routines. What are some strategies you have used? Um, yeah, <clears throat> I think you're specifically meaning in high school. Shannon, is that true that you're talking more about high school? Um, or maybe college, but you're not really going to play multiple sports in college and unless you're very uh, unique. But uh, um, yeah, well, I mean, when I was in high school, I didn't have, I, I mean, I didn't, I simply didn't know about arm care routines, working out. I, I really was just naive to it. So I just played my sports. And I think, Shannon, I think that that's perfectly fine. Um, yeah, I think it's perfectly fine to just focus on the sport that you play. Like if you're playing basketball in the wintertime, play basketball. Don't worry about baseball. I mean, if you're if you if you're passionate about training for baseball, I think that that you'll find a way to mix it in with your with your day to day work. But I wouldn't stress about it too much because you're gonna get your work in playing basketball, and and I think that you get a whole different skill set playing a different sport, and and that's also as important as as training and doing your arm care routines. But I mean, if your arm is something that you're worried about, if, if you have arm issues, previous arm issues, if you need to really be diligent with your arm care routines at, while you're playing basketball, I would suggest finding a routine that's simplistic enough that you can do kind of anywhere, anytime. I have tons of stuff that we can do with no weights, no, no dumbbells, no weighted balls. You just have your body and you can lay on the ground and do isometric shoulder holds. I mean, there's a million things that you can do to keep it really simple. Um, find something that's, that's really, really basic, really simple, something that you can do anytime, any place, anywhere. And, uh, that will make it a lot easier for you to be able to mix stuff in, you know, after basketball practice or, or whatever you're doing. Um, you can go home, watch some TV and do some isometric shoulder holds. And, and that will be a, a terrific thing for your body and for your arm. Um, <clears throat> hopefully that answers your question. Cause I know that that's a tough thing, but honestly, it's, it's, it's really healthy to play other sports and to focus on that and to try to learn other things. I mean, we talked about Kyler Murray, you know, he's, he's grown up playing really heavily two sports, baseball and football. And I think that that adds a giant piece to his athleticism. Um, and made him the athlete that he is because he was, a, he's well-rounded. He knows kind of how to problem solve and how to figure things out in, in, in other sports. And, 
I think that's a huge piece. I mean, there's not he's not the only one that that's played that has a a, a pass of playing baseball and football. I mean, one of the best quarterbacks in the league right now, Patrick Mahomes, has a heavy baseball background. I think his father played professionally, um, <clears throat> maybe even in the big leagues. I, I can't remember, but. Um, you know, he, he played baseball heavily before he got into football. Obviously, I think he made the right decision on, on what sport to play. But um, I think that that adds a huge um, f uh, positive force to his style of game, his style of play. Because he's, I mean, you watch Patrick Mahomes play and Kyler Murray for that matter. And they have kind of this <clears throat> gift of kind of being able to navigate the game around them better and to be able to, to, to react to situations and to make adjustments. And I mean, Patrick Mahomes, one of the most amazing things about that guy is his ability to kind of get out of trouble and being able to throw the ball from different spots and being able to just kind of adapt and um, make adjustments per situation to get him out of trouble or to just be, be athletic and, and to make a throw where a, a normal quarterback might not be able to, cause he's very fundamental and he has to have his feet set. You know, Patrick makes most of his throws off balance and he's able to do that from his baseball background because baseball, everything is just a reaction and you have to be athletic and you have to be able to understand situationally and, uh, <clears throat> you have to have high awareness for what's happening around you and, 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 you know, you have to know in your peripherals what's going on. He has good field sight, and he can see everything. And that's that's a, that's a huge piece that he picked up from baseball. Kyler, too. I'm sure I don't watch Kyler play quite as much as I do Patrick, but um, I know that playing other sports gives you a whole nother realm of of athleticism and and problem solving abilities. So I, I would say Shannon, throw your throw yourself into whatever sport you're playing in the winter time, and and just enjoy that because you know. You're not going to be able to play multiple sports forever. And I miss playing basketball and I miss playing soccer and all the things that I did when I was young. And <laughs> you're going to miss and look back on that time and want to uh, have it be a positive memory. So definitely uh, don't think that you need or you're missing out. I mean, if you can mix in a few things here and there, but like, you know, play your sport and, and that's fine. Um, 180 seconds or less. Where's the best place to hide sticky? The best place to hide sticky is to not use it. Obviously, that's the best place to hide it. I, I don't want to motivate anybody to, to use tack on the baseball. I mean, I never really used it myself, but there was plenty of people that I played with that did, and it, it can be a big deal and, and can be a big help. So um, if, if, if you're somebody that needs that, I mean, figure out a way, but I mean, I'm not going to give advice on this. It's whatever. I never needed it, never use it. Um, I never wanted to rely on that. Um, I never wanted to rely on anything because I knew that at, at one point it's not going to be there. And <laughs> um, okay, uh, Christian Scanlon, what's the biggest piece of advice on getting drafted out of a small D1 conference like the NEC? Wow, the NEC, great question. <clears throat> you know. Obviously, I, I played in the NEC myself. Uh, I went to Sacred Heart, and it's a small conference, and it's tough to get drafted out of. Not impossible, but it's tough. And, uh, you know, there's not too much exposure. And, and I, I would say, and I've given this advice before to kids, and Christian, I'll say it to you, I mean, the best thing you can do is just train and play to the best of your ability. And, and, as much as you can try not to worry about it i it's it's kind of something that even goes beyond your control I, I think there's not too much that you can do in that situation um to like prom i mean what are you going to do like promote yourself all you can do is play the best you can and and prepare to play the best you can so you train your butt off um you, you know you you get yourself to the best place you can be physically mentally and then you perform as best you can and take advantage of the opportunities that are given to you to to perform well and then just trust that if you're good enough they're gonna find you they're gonna come watch you they're gonna be there and uh you're gonna get that phone call when it's draft time and uh you know i, I it was something that was often on my mind it was obviously something that i wanted to happen in my college career and and i i just i wasn't sure what i could do to improve my chances other than just pitch and play the best that i could I, you know i couldn't you can't go to any, I mean, it's tough. You, you have scout day, but like, is it really scout day? You know, it's like, there are people that are local that come. You know, I know there was a couple, a couple local scouts that came, but, um, <laughs> Tristan, what's going on, man? Yeah. 
yeah, we're here, man. We're going to do this. This is going to be it. Live stream. Um, Tristan's one of our remote clients is on Instagram. Just give me a shout out. But uh, anything you need, Tristan, let me know, man. You can you can ask questions here too, man. We have office hours on Mondays and stuff too for, for remote clients. Um, but I mean, if you got something you need to talk about, like let's let's do it here. But yeah, I mean, Christian, don't worry about it, man. Just play, play, play your heart out, play the best that you can, and and just hope that the things work out because and tr hope and trust your ability to perform and, and do well so that things work out. But uh, I mean, honestly, I didn't even know. Like, so I got. If you guys don't know this, I got free agent signed after college. I didn't get drafted. I missed the draft, which was a tough thing to. To, to miss and it, it hurt me a lot but a couple days later i got called by the houston astros and they free agent signed me and uh what that basically means is you know when people get drafted not all of them go and play for their respective organizations some of them <clears throat> um vote to go back to school or, or vote to go to college from high school so they have spots that open up that they missed from the draft so they fill they backfill those with free agent signs and i was one of those free agent signs they had me on a list and you know, when somebody didn't sign, they had a spot open, they called me up and they say, Hey, do you want to come down? And I say, yep. And that was it. So I got free agent signed. I did not get drafted. <coughs> but, uh, Christian, before that happened, I didn't even, I wasn't even aware that the Houston Astros were, were that had, I was even on the radar. I had no idea. The scouts that I knew were watching me were for other teams. Um, the, the scouts that I had met that were talking to me, um, you know, potentially going to draft me or whatever smoke that they blew my way. I, I, there were, none of them were Houston Astros. And then all of a sudden I got the call about a week after the draft and it was the Astros and they wanted me to come play for them. I never even knew that they came to watch a game. I never even knew that they were at the game or in the stands or, or reaching out. I, I had no idea. So <clears throat> like I said, there's not much you can do about it. Just play your butt off, man. You're in a small school, but you're going to have opportunity and there's scouts in the NEC. There may be few, but there are. And word travels, man. If you're good enough, if you have something special, they're going to find you. I promise. Um, and yeah, trust yourself and trust your abilities. It's the best thing. <laughs> Welcome, Josh. No questions, huh? You like my Christmas tree, though? Decorated it myself, dude. That was my biggest piece, my, my Homer Simpson Santa Claus. Hope you guys enjoy that. What exactly do you get? If you, I think you mean buy ATP's remote throwing program, and would it be worth buying if I throw for my college team already? Matthew, this is a terrific question, man. Tristan, I'm going to answer your question in just a second, okay? I I read it, I have it, I'm uh, I got it locked and loaded. I will answer you in just a minute, okay? Um, Matthew, this is a really good question, man. Um, the ATP program, the the remote throwing program, <clears throat> is something that no matter what situation you're in in your life, whether you're young, before high school, middle school, I mean, even, I, I would say even younger than that, we could possibly do something for you, but like high school, college, professional, I mean, I even have some some guys that are grown men doing the throwing program. Doesn't matter what stage you are in your career, doesn't matter what time of year you're in, we have programs built for everything, okay? And, and we're gonna build them around you and your specific situation, and everybody has a unique background, a unique situation, um, and we will we will cater to your situation. And we will build it around you, okay, to make it the best thing for you. Um, <clears throat> so what you get, you get a month to month throwing program that us, our team here at ATP built. Um, me alongside Dr. Heenan and 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 Luke, our our on site throwing um, coach, and uh, all the all the ATP team members kind of collaborated and built this this throwing program out. Um, so you get a month to month program that's going to directly, you know, like I said, cater to your needs and wants as a, as a thrower. We don't just do pitchers either. We do, we do infield, outfield catchers, anything throwing related. We're on top of it. Um, so you'll get a month to month program. It'll be, it depends on where you're at in your, in your year, whether you're in a season, in your off season or in your preseason, um, we have different programs to kind of fit. And then if you already throw for your college team, absolutely. We have tons of clients that are, that are currently in college um, doing our program as well as the college workload, whatever you're doing with your team, your practices, your bullpens, all that stuff. Um, 100% you can do it. Um, not only do you get the throwing programs, the actual written programs with you know instructional videos linked and all that stuff, but you get <clears throat> weekly office hours with me, which is something that nobody else offers. And um, 
every Monday I, I log on to a you know a conference call and all, all of my active remote throwing clients can come in and ask me and talk to me just like what you're seeing right here and except I'm obviously talking to them on the on the conference call so you can come in and, and ask questions and I can go over a video I can give you a full analysis of your delivery your mechanics um, we can go over your drill work that you're currently doing if you're currently doing a program we go over everything I mean, uh, if there's anybody here that can comment in the chat, like what your experience is with the office hours, like please write it in the in the chat windows, um, and and tell people what the benefit is of of being able to talk to somebody and being able to go over stuff face to face every week, every Monday. I'm there, um, and you don't get that anywhere else, man. I'm I'm there. I'm there for two hours, and uh, I get to everybody. I make sure everybody has their their time, and and we go over everything, man. We can talk about whatever as long as it's uh, obviously throwing related. Uh, but yeah, that's basically what you get, man. You get you get me. You get a you get a former uh, professional baseball player, a former pitcher, um, former big leaguer. You know, this is this is what you get. You get you get access to somebody who's been and seen a lot of things in baseball and, and pitching and throwing, and uh, have a lot of experience in a lot of different things. So um, you get access to me. That's what you get. That's the most important thing you get, I think. Because um, you know, programs are program. Everybody has a program. Everybody has a different. Uh, theory on how to you know develop and and progress as a baseball player in your career and uh you know who knows what's right what's wrong but at least we'll talk it through and you'll and you'll be able to make adjustments and and we'll be we'll be riding it right there alongside you you're not just going to be handed some generic program and and be told to do something and not know why and not know what you're doing so everything's going to be through me man i'm here for you guys and that's what you get if you sign up and I mean, look, it's 50 bucks a month that you can't beat that deal, man. There's programs out there that are way more than that and you get a lot less. So it's a really good idea for you guys to sign up. Also, don't forget, like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, turn on bell notifications so you guys are notified when we have content. We're going to go live weekly like this. We're going to talk about different things. Um, I'm going to talk to you guys. I want to I wanna answer your questions. I want to go over stuff. Um, but please like the video, subscribe to the channel. That helps out a ton. Turn on the notifications. Um, we're gonna we're gonna make this a thing, and it's gonna be fun. Okay, Matthew, you're welcome, man. All right, Tristan. Tristan has a really good question, and it's a it's a pretty deep one, I, I would say. Right, Tristan. <clears throat> so he asks, how did you deal with pregame anxiety in your career? any affirmations you told yourself to get you settled in um this is a a, a huge topic man uh tristan and I, and I know it's a big thing going forward and uh this is one of the things that honestly when i get into my office hours this is one of the things that i spend my the most of my time doing is talking through mental stuff with with my clients because you know the physical stuff is simple it's fairly simple it's it's not rocket science and i think that most kids that are subscribed to my program that that participate in our program come to these office hours for for um help mentally with their game whatever it can be strategies confidence anything um and it's it was a big piece of why i had the success that i had but it didn't come i mean it wasn't i wasn't like terrific at mental stuff like i wasn't I learned throughout my career to be better at the things that were important mentally and it takes time and it takes uh, experience and it takes failing honestly Tristan a lot of failing and that's how you learn and get better but uh <clears throat> pregame anxiety so anxiety before the game I mean everybody has a little bit of it what what kind of uh level that you have it is is definitely specific to each person um i i honestly didn't get it that badly but there were times when i was nervous man and i and i had anxiety before games and i had anxiety leading up to games days before games <clears throat> um the 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 best thing to do is just um focus on preparing focus on preparing yourself physically and, and keep your mind busy pre-game pre-game like i'm talking right before day of the start you're gonna make or the the game you're about to play um try just try and try and stay busy try and you know try and keep your mind busy whether you're you know doing you're rolling out or, or prepping your body or or messing around with your teammates or you know shagging bp i mean anything to kind of just keep your mind busy so that you're not just sitting you know waiting thinking um i had a difficult time because i you know as a starting pitcher 
in professional baseball, you pitch every five days and you know, the, you have a lot of time to think about stuff, tons of time. And, uh, a lot of guys can't deal with that. And it's really difficult, especially when, you know, maybe you pitched poorly the, the outing before and you have five days to think about it before your next outing. And that makes you even more anxious. Cause you're like, oh, I don't want to go there. Um, <clears throat> but you know, you'll learn as you kind of go through stuff, what the best thing is for you. You know, some people like to stay quiet, put headphones in and just zone everybody out and, and prep yourself that way. Listen to music. I mean, you're going to find your own tools. For me, I, I didn't need that. I, I wanted to interact with my teammates. I didn't want to be that guy that comes in with his headphones on and hood over and, and was just tunnel vision and quiet and somebody who's uncomfortable to be around. Like, I didn't want to be that guy. Um, because I didn't like being around those guys because I didn't feel like I wanted to, I didn't want to mess them up or, or get in, get in the way of their, their prep routine or whatever. Um, make sure that this is up to date here, but you'll, you'll learn, you'll learn the best things for you and, and the best things that you can do to kind of overcome that pregame anxiety, Tristan, it's just something that is going to take time and, and experience, but um, my suggestion would just be to, to keep yourself busy and, and trust yourself, man. This this game's all about confidence and you have to be confident in yourself and you have to understand <clears throat> that you can only control so much. And when push comes to shove, trust your training, trust your hard work and, and trust your ability to kind of just react to the things that are going to get thrown at you and, and to, to breathe and, and to, to relax and, and lean into that and it'll it'll help you kind of smooth out those anxieties because you'll be like oh i'm you know i'm good i'm i'm good enough i'm, I'm i've worked hard enough i've earned this spot and and i trust that you know i'll be able to put up with whatever the game throws at me because i've done it or if you have past experiences of, of you doing something like that's what helps me too like i i felt like at the end of my career when i was really good at this mental stuff i i told myself that i've been through everything because i had i'd I'd been through a lot man i failed a lot i've given up homers man i've been through everything so i knew that like no matter what is going to happen like i've been there i've done it before i've gotten over it and i've been fine and uh that had kind of helped me relax and and just trust myself and be able to kind of do my job and and compete without a worry you know um but yeah it helps to kind of go through a ton i know you're young tristan and in the beginning of your career but you know that's experiences are going to come and you're going to you know have more to rely on when you look back on it so um that's my answer to that question <laughs> great question though tristan i really like that question man. and uh and, and tristan join me in, uh, on monday man he's he's one of my remote clients tristan and he can uh he can come to my office hours and we can we can chat about that more man you got it buddy Appreciate you coming in. Matthew, good question, man. Did you ever play with any star big league players? And if so, what was their work ethic slash personality like? Ooh, good question. <laughs> yeah, I played with my fair share of, uh, of stars. Um, I've been fortunate, very fortunate um, in my career to play with a lot of talented guys, man. I was on the Angels in 2017, so I played with Trout, Albert Pujols, I mean everybody I feel like everybody was a star at Anderson Simmons like you know you name them they're they're on the team Brandon Phillips ended up playing for us Cole Calhoun Martin Maldonado who I see in the big leagues all the time catching for the Strohs he was our catcher uh who else man <clears throat> um yeah I, I got to play with a, a, a few a, a lot Tim Lincecum I I did a uh I was in AAA with Timmy when he was kind of making a comeback in his career. And being in AAA with him was a little bit different than being in the big leagues with those guys because AAA is is different. You 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 have so much more time to interact with these kids in AAA because um, everybody's at the clubhouse and the clubhouse is less divided and less, you know, because there's a lot of different personalities in the big leagues and it's hard to kind of walk up to Albert Pujols and be like, yo, what's up, man? Can we talk for a second? It's like, you know, it doesn't work like that everybody's kind of a professional and they do their job and they have their routines and everybody's doing their own thing. But in AAA, everybody's just, you know, you're in the clubhouse, just chilling, man. You, you're, you long hours, you long bus rides, you know, you're, you're in the hotels together. You're, you're traveling all, you're going through, you're eating together, all this stuff you're doing together. You're playing cards in the clubhouse, like shagging BP. And I got to talk to Timmy quite a bit and he's a wonderful human being. One of my most cherished memories playing baseball was when I got to play with Timmy and, uh, what a, what a cool person. Um, and all of them, Matthew, 
all of the stars that I played with, I, I have nothing poor to say about any of them. They all work so hard, and there's a reason why they're there. You know, there's a reason why those guys made it, and and they made it ahead of other people. It's because <clears throat> they have really, really polished work ethics. They they bust their butts every day. They they know, um, they know exactly how to prepare for doing their job, and they and they crush it. And I mean. You talk about one of the biggest stars, Mike Trout. I mean, that guy, he's early to the field every single day in, in LA. I mean, he was there. I'm ta- and I would, I was a rookie. I had to get there early. So, you know, you're talking about getting to the field at like, you know, one o'clock for a home game at seven. And that's pretty early. I mean, a lot of people show up later than that, but like, and I know Trout lived kind of far away too. Cause he lives, um, he lived kind of far away from the stadium. So I know he had to drive through traffic, you know, probably an hour or so to the game, but he was there like early 11 AM sometimes. And he was there lit. He would lift and hitting, hitting in the cage constantly doing training work. Um, if he was, had some bumps and bruises, I mean, I'm sure he's in the training room all the time, taking care of something or doing modalities or whatever. But I mean, that dude worked hard, man. He, and, and pool host too. Like he hits all the time. Those guys are impressive to watch because they just, they work at their stuff, man. They're, they're obsessed about it. And that's what makes them great. Um, and they're, and they're all awesome people. Pool host is a little bit intimidating. Um, he's like the godfather of, you know, the team and, and the mob boss and very intimidating giant guy, obviously big guy, but he's so friendly, so nice, made sure to shake my hand and, and learn my name. Like that's something that he didn't have to do. I mean, I'm some no name rookie and he, that I, I'll never forget the following year in spring training because I, I was up for a, about a month in, in the fall of 2017 and then I returned for spring training in 2018 and he remembered my name and everything. I mean, that was that was a touching moment because he had no business needing to remember my name. I mean, we didn't interact that much. We were in the dugouts, but <laughs> what a, what an awesome guy. And Trout, of, of course, was, was great too and all those guys were awesome. Um, I, I don't have one bad thing to say about anybody. Um, Jesse Chavez. I don't know if you guys know who Jesse Chavez is. He's a good friend of my brother's. My brother played in the big leagues and he's, he was in the angels and I was so lucky to have him too. Cause he was such a nice guy. And so, um, he looked out for me as being a rookie so well and, and was always, <clears throat> um, just making sure that I wasn't, you know, that I, I had it, everything that I needed and that I knew where to go and, and that I wasn't just like kind of, you know, lost or whatever as, cause it's kind of intimidating getting called up and you don't know where to go. You don't know what to do. So, I mean, Jesse was, was amazing. Um, all those guys work really hard, though, man. They they all have insane work ethics, insane uh, determination to to be great, even though they're already there and they're already great. You know, like they're they're not they're not those boys don't stop when they get up there, man. They they work hard. Um, great question though. Um, <clears throat> wonder if there's any questions that I missed. If you guys have any. Okay, I missed one from. I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. A A. Agmez. I'm just gonna say it's something Gomez. I'm not sure, but uh, he he asked how to remove the discomfort when making a bullpen or important game. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I think your question is kind of along the lines of Tristan's question about how to remove anxiety. Matthew, you're welcome, man. Thanks for coming in and joining us. Um, check back in next week, man. We're going to be doing this again. Um, I'm, it's looking at maybe like Wednesday is going to be like kind of the regular day. We're trying to figure that out still. But yeah, come again, man. Come hang out. Um, yeah, um, Agmez, I, 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 uh, I'm not quite sure how to answer your question, how to remove discomfort. I don't know if you're talking about if you're in arm pain or if you're talking about just like mental discomfort before a game or bullpen. But uh <clears throat> Rewind the video, <laughs> go go watch the, the, the VOD back and, and I'll answer your question because I answered it with Tristan's question about anxiety, pregame anxiety and all that stuff. Um, if you have an arm pain, that's a whole different story though. I wouldn't be throwing through your arm pain through your bullpens and stuff. Make sure you get that checked out if you have significant pain in your arm. Um, and yeah, so <laughs> I appreciate everybody coming. Um, we have a few people on Instagram, a few people on YouTube. I appreciate everybody being here. If you guys have any questions, please write in the chat, interact with me. I'm here for you guys. 
Um, we can talk about Kyler and we can talk about baseball and football. We can talk about anything. We can talk about our throwing program. Um, if you guys are here, I appreciate you liking the video, subscribe to our channel, hit the bell notifications, make sure you guys are subbed and, and stuff for, for when we put out future content because we're going to be doing this live streaming pretty regularly from here on out. So, um, yeah, any other questions, please write in the chat, anybody, anything. Um, got another 15 minutes or so, I'm going to be live. So, um, you guys have anything that you want to say, please ask away. <clears throat> see if I missed any questions on Instagram. It's hard to see the chat. It goes by quick. Abraham, the goat. Yeah, thank you for joining Abraham. I haven't talked to you in forever. He used to train at ATP forever ago. Great guy. Ooh, Shannon, good question. Stretch versus wind up. Thank you for asking. Now, if you guys are have any idea what I do with my throwing programs, you guys know I'm a big advocate of the stretch. Um, I, I think that the stretch is often underworked or underappreciated. Uh, I, I mean, I threw from the windup too, and, and I hardly ever... I hardly ever felt like I needed to prioritize doing a windup over the stretch. I always wanted to make sure that I was super comfortable in the stretch for sure. I think stretches, your your most important pitches need to be from the stretch. They're going to be from the stretch. You need to be polished. You need to be comfortable from the stretch. And uh, everything should be kind of built around your stretch delivery. Windup is kind of like, you know, do whatever it's going to be. There's not no pressure. There's nobody on base. You can kind of figure it out. As far as what, which one is preferred, <clears throat> I, I mean, you can have both. I, I have nothing against having both. Like I said, I had both. I, I threw from the windup with nobody on base. But anytime there was a runner on base, even if there was a runner on third, I always threw from the stretch. I just felt um, I needed to be quick and efficient, and I needed my stretch delivery to be you know, on point. And I was very comfortable in the stretch, and that's because I practiced it constantly. I never practiced the windup. I mean, rarely practiced the windup. If I did, it would be just a few pitches here and there, but most of my bullpen sessions were all stretch work. Um, and I wanted to just make sure that I was super, super comfortable in the stretch. Um, so as far as like developing and training, I would say prioritize that over everything. Make sure that you're, <clears throat> make sure that you have one authentic, optimal, efficient stretch delivery, one. That's my biggest piece of advice. One delivery. No slide step, no quick step, no big kick out of the stretch. Just one delivery. It has to be quick. It has to be efficient. I want you to, to be able to throw as hard as you can or as hard as you um, have <clears throat> the capacity for out of the stretch. I don't want you to be going so fast that you're losing your velo, but I just want the one delivery. I think that it's so important to not have to think about all these other things. Keep it simple. Have one delivery get really comfortable when you come set so that you can breathe and think about all these things that are happening around you clearly <laughs> excuse me and uh and yeah and then just get it consistent practice it every bullpen session you should be throwing everything from the stretch get really crispy good at it and then uh, you don't have to worry about stuff you can you can be comfortable when there's runners on base when there's stuff hitting the fan you can you can be comfortable you can come set you can breathe you can think clearly you don't have any tension when you come set i don't want any tension you know like i don't want to see you tense when you come set that uh that's a that's a big piece good question augie this is great dude he writes best lift to throw gas excellent question man <clears throat> but yeah that's my shannon hopefully that answers your question about stretch versus wind up so wind up's fine stretch practice get perfect at get one delivery and you're gonna be good man you're gonna be thanking me that you have one simplified stretch delivery that you that you can practice so you don't have to worry about anything else so augie asked what's the best lift to throw gas dude i think it's the reverse lunge i think there's nothing better than a reverse lunge to gain velocity and gain power in your legs obviously we know that our power comes from our legs from our lower half and we need to be super powerful in that reverse lunge position because that's the position we throw from dude and you you watch most guys that throw cheese and, and they're they're strong in that position and they're consistent um <clears throat> so reverse lunges load them up get really good at doing a lot of weight with both legs boom you're gonna be fine 
CT's finest, showing some love. Most memorable punchy at the big league level for you. And thoughts on CT current day, the baseball world. Going up, going down. You the man, keep grinding. Thank you, Matthew. Um, all right. Let me try to break your question down. I appreciate it, man. Welcome in. Most memorable punchy at the big league level. I love that question. So, most memorable punchy. Oh, boy. I could even bring it up. I have a video of it here somewhere, I think. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah i i definitely have the most memorable punchy in my head because a little bit of a backstory but i have an older brother who played professionally obviously and and played in the big leagues for a while but he evan had some trouble against adrian beltre and and Adrian Belcha, obviously one of the best hitters ever. That guy was amazing, but he always crushed my brother. And I got the chance to face him for hit the end of his career when he was playing for the Texas Rangers. And uh, I want to say, I think I have video of it right here. If I can get him, see if I can find, yeah. All right. So this is the my first attempt at facing Adrian Beltre, and it was in one of my starts for the Angels um, in 2017. But I had him 0-2. I, I don't remember what I threw him in the pitches previously. It's not in this video, but um, I was up 0-2, and I, and I, you know, 0-2 to Adrian Beltre. Like, what do you throw? And I had to just pick what I thought was my best pitch, and I ended up throwing probably one of the best pitches of my life. Um, it was a <laughs> backdoor changeup that I got to come back over the outer outside part, and he kind of gave up on it. Um, definitely one of the most memorable because I, I'll never forget. I texted my brother right after that game, and uh, I ended up striking out Adrian again later in that game. So I, he was over two off me, but <clears throat> which was awesome. But I was talking crap to my brother about it because. <laughs> he was struggling out. <laughs> Excuse me. He, he struggled off Adrian Beltre. Always hit him hard. Hit a couple homers off him. And it felt good to strike somebody out that Evan had trouble getting out. Because, we, I mean, we're brothers, man. You're competitive. And we're always trying to outdo each other, of course. So um, that was a good moment. So good question. And thoughts on CT current day in the baseball world? Going up, going down. You to man. Um, yeah, I mean, Connecticut. Is that what you mean? Connecticut as CT? I'm not. I haven't been in Connecticut in a really long time, man. I haven't. I haven't lived in, at home in Connecticut for quite some time, and so I don't really know what the scene is like um, in CT these days, man. I can't really comment on that. Um, I hope it's going up. I, I. I really don't know. I know that our facility in Stanford is doing great, and and it's a. I've. I've been there. It's a beautiful facility. If you guys have the opportunity to go and check it out, please do. Um, Josh done a really good job setting it up, and it's a it's a wonderful spot. So uh, hopefully it's on the up and up, man. I uh, I don't really know what else to uh, come. <laughs> and my brother's in the chat. Yeah, he owned you. I remember Evan. I don't know if you remember, but he hit that back back uh, back knee homer off you when you were on Oakland on a curveball that Evan threw him that was about to bounce into the catcher's glove and he went down and got it. Classic Adrian Beltre swing where he gets down to his back knee and he hit a, a missile over the fence. And I'll never forget that too because I was watching that live, I think. <clears throat> Augie, okay, Augie asked, how many days should you throw a week? Another good question. Um, it, again, it kind of varies. <laughs> It kind of depends on it depends on a lot. It depends on where you're at in your year. So, off season, in season, whatever. Um, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Are you trying to build velocity? Are you trying to? I 
I appreciate you, Matthew. Yeah, it was a, it was a good time, man. Yep. Don't worry. Plenty of other guys hit dingers off me though, so it's not that cool. Anyways, um, <clears throat> yeah, it depends on what you're doing. I mean, you you uh, ideally, you know, there's different situations for whatever team you're playing on, but because college has a different timetable um, than professional, high school has a different timetable than college. So there's different, like, you know, you're not going to pitch. You're going to pitch a little bit more often in high school because I think you guys play every every other day at a good time, maybe three, three times a week, two times a week, maybe. And then college, I know you play like your conference games are usually on the weekend and then you might have a midweek, but you don't always play in that midweek game. It depends on where you're at, but it's different. So <clears throat> I would say the most important thing about how to, how to know how many days a week to throw is to listen to your body. Um, there's there's times when it's important to throw and then there's times when it's more important not to throw and that's a big piece of our throwing program that i like to teach and i like to program out to my guys not only to pay attention to their throw days but to pay attention to their non-throw days their rico days their recovery days um sometimes it's more important to do less rather than to do more you know your body can only take so much and if you're not allowing it to breathe and recover you're not going to get the most out of it we need to give our bodies time um my programs, most of them are three times a week, I would say, but there are some that are two times a week. There are some that are four times a week, <laughs> kind of depending on this, the schedule. But, uh, um, you know, typically in season, you're going to throw off the mound twice a week um, in your game or in your start, and then you're going to throw like a practice bullpen in between there too. So, um typically you throw twice a week and then you can throw in the in the days in between as well as long as you kind of control the the rpe the percentage of exertion that you're giving make sure that you're at a low rpe make sure that you're chilling you have a nice little calm day so that you can rico you need to give yourself some time to rico what should you do to recover augie there's a lot of things you can do to recover my favorite thing was to <clears throat> do some conditioning i don't know if you have done maybe like an incline walk on a treadmill or ride a bike or something that's going to get your heart rate up to a certain level and keep it there for like 30 minutes or even more like you can go longer but uh anything that's going to kind of spin your blood and get your get your blood pumping and your heart pumping to kind of pump new new fresh nutrients to your muscles and to heal your body quicker but yeah go on a walk i mean the rico days especially after a heavy heavy day like after a post start definitely like get on a treadmill walk uphill for 30 minutes put on some music that's like kind of the best thing honestly to kind of cycle out all that garbage that your body kind of creates and to pump fresh blood and fresh nutrients to your to your muscles your sore muscles um <clears throat> ice baths recovery baths stuff like that um contrast baths all that stuff is is great um you can do you know, arm care routines, workouts. I mean, there's a million different things you can do. But uh, my favorite stuff for after a really, really heavy day, like after a start was to walk on a treadmill, to ride a bike um, and try to get my heart rate up to like 120, 130 and then just hold it there and, and watch a show or, or listen to music for 30 minutes or 40 minutes and get off and do some stretching, do some modalities, try to get your your, your muscles feeling good and, and, and roll them out or whatever you need to do to recover. Those are some great tools though. <clears throat> um, for those, those really, when you're really beat up, those are the days when I would say to, to do that kind of stuff. So, um, that can, seems to help speed everything up. Also gets good sleep. Like we haven't talked about that. Eat the right food. Like that's a huge piece of it. Augie eating, sleeping, you have to be able to, um, put some focus on that kind of stuff. Don't just shrug it off. Like it's fine, but quality sleep is a big piece of recovery, huge piece of recovery. That's not talked about too much. And then the diet is a giant one too. Make sure you're putting the right things in your body because your body needs fuel. And uh, if you're, you know, eating crap, it's gonna produce crap fuel, and you're not gonna feel good. You're not gonna recover as good. So, cut out sugar, man. Sugar's garbage. Processed sugar, processed carbohydrates, that kind of stuff is not good. Get your get your real food in, dude. Eat real food. And then yeah, sleep. Um, let's see if I missed any other questions. Good questions, Augie. I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you coming by. Anybody else have any questions? I'm going to be here for maybe another minute or so. Probably sign off here soon. Should you be bulked up in season or lean? 
<clears throat> yeah, no problem, man. What, uh, Sean, give me a second. I'll answer you in just a second. He asked me what food do you recommend for bulking? Let me answer Augie first. Augie asked, should you be bulked up or should you be lean in season? I mean, it depends. It depends on... I, I, I guess it depends on what you need. I, if you're somebody who is usually holding a lot of body fat, I think it's probably better for you to be lean. If it's somebody that has difficulty gaining weight and putting on body fat, I think it's It's definitely important for you to bulk up. You know, kind of depends on what kind of person you are. Me, I was always trying to. <laughs> me, I was always trying to bulk up and gain weight for as as much weight as I could, whether it was bad weight, muscle, whatever. Trying to to eat food and gain weight no matter what, because I knew that that was going to not only give me more velocity and power but it was going to give me more longevity and, and over the course of a long minor league season or major league season um that was going to be the best thing for me but a ton of people would want to cut weight before season could lean out try to lose some body fat so that they could uh feel better feel lighter through their season so um it kind of depends on your situation um the best food to bulk up dude oh man that, it's a another tough question anything anything if you have trouble putting on weight literally anything is good but obviously real food and real food means stuff that's from the earth you know meat cheese you know whatever vegetables fruits like things that are grown or come from nature as as direct from the source as you can is good food to, to help put on weight and then you just have to eat a ton of it um eat good real healthy food okay processed garbage is not the best thing so um yeah real food What's up? Bully on Austin. Hey, bro. What's going on, man? Thank you for coming in. How'd you get Beltre out? My brother asks on YouTube. I don't know, man. You didn't have a changeup. That was probably what happened. I had a changeup. I could throw him. You, you, had that, you just had the one-two curveball fastball combination. That wasn't enough for Adrian. He's too good, man. He baited you. He baited you into throwing that second hammer because you threw the first one. And he... Uh, he missed it by a mile. God, I think it was on Sports Center top ten or not top ten or no, it was top ten probably because it was a homer. But <laughs> yeah, that's funny. No, yeah, I threw him the backdoor changeup. I think I got him on a fastball on the second at bat, and it was. I don't remember if it was like a mistake pitch or it, I kind of got bailed out by him swinging at a, a ball. But whatever, we'll take it. You know, it happens. Um. Alrighty, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. This has been good. This has been a good hour. Um, I appreciate everybody who joined. If you guys um, would like to, just like the video, subscribe, make sure you guys are doing all that stuff. Hit the bell notification so that you guys are notified the next time we, we, we are going live or putting out some content here on YouTube. Um, we're going to try to do this weekly and it's been really fun. So I appreciate everybody who came and interacted. Um, yeah, we'll do this again. I'll answer your question, Luke. How much does the Proteus motion machine cost? I don't know what that is. I think you answered that or asked that question earlier. I have no idea what that is. Creed on mobility. Should you stretch every night? Okay, mobility is important, but but practical mobility is more important. Meaning, I think in order to gain mobility, you need to practice moving in those motions or in those movements, in those quality movements. So stretching is not always the most beneficial. It's it's more so getting your body used to moving in a certain way. So being a pitcher, Creed, because I know you're a part of our program, um, we move in a very unique way. And if you're able to practice those positions and get strong in those positions, your body will open up to those positions. And, and not only will you be flexible enough to get into those positions, but you'll be strong in those positions. That's ideal for mobility. So stretching is not always the best. It can help, but it's usually short term. I would more so practice the quality of movements that you're going to need and then i would practice getting really strong in those movements um you know that 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 can mean anything long toss working on in your bullpen reverse lunging like i said chin-ups all those kind of things that are going to put you at max ranges of motion um those things are going to help you gain mobility towards that movement pattern so um creed good question man all right i'm going to sign off here guys it's been fun though i appreciate everybody coming by like and subscribe hit the bell um, if you guys are on Instagram, head over to the YouTube channel, grab the video, hit the like button, help us out. It's going to, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a big help. So I appreciate everybody coming and, uh, 
yeah, we will catch you guys next time. Look, look out for some, some tweets on my Twitter, some notifications on Instagram for the next time we go live. It'll probably be next Wednesday around this time, I would say. Um, but yeah, we appreciate everybody coming out and, uh, 